everyone, welcome to Edupedia World 9th grade computer applications video lecture series. I'm Upeka Vandibona and this episode is for discuss about privacy and data protection. So privacy. Why privacy is much important factor to consider. Privacy can affect many aspects of an individual's life from commerce to healthcare to work to recreation. For example, we speak of consumer privacy, medical and healthcare privacy, employee and workplace privacy and so forth. Consider that in carrying out many of our day-to-day -day activities, we supply information to organizations that use computers to record, store and exchange those data. These activities can include information we provide in filling out various forms or they can include information acquired from our commercial transactions in a bank or a store. Also consider that many people now engage in online commerce activities and these raises some additional consumer related privacy worries. Users who navigate the web solely for the recreational purposes are also at risk with respect to their privacy. For example, personal data about one's interests and preferences can be acquired by organizations and by individuals whose need for this information is not always obvious. Furthermore, personal data about us collected via our online activities and transactions can then be sold to third parties. Consider that applications such as Google Street View make use of satellite cameras and GPS softwares that enable internet users to zoom in your house or place of employment and potentially record information about you. And also, CCTVs located in public places and in shopping malls record many of your daily movements as you casually stroll through those environments. So even if you have never used a computer, cell phone, internet-enabled electronic device, etc., your privacy is threatened in ways that were not possible in the past. Anyway, concerns about personal privacy existed long before the advent of computers and cyber technology. Prior to the information era, for example, technologies such as cameras and telephones presented challenges for privacy. So we can ask, what is the special about the privacy concerns with cyber technology? Consider the impact that changes involving this technology have had on privacy with respect to the amount of personal information that can be collected and speed at which personal information can be transmitted and duration of time that the information can be retained and finally the kind of information that can be acquired and exchanged. Cyber technology makes it possible to collect and store much more information about individuals than was possible in the pre-computer era. The amount of personal information that could be collected in the pre-computer era was determined by practical considerations such as the physical space required to store the data and the time and difficulty involved in collecting the data. Today, of course, digitized information that can be stored electronically in computer databases takes up very little storage space and can be collected with relative ease. Consider the speed at which information is exchanged and transferred between databases. At one time, records had to be physically transported between filing destinations. The time it took to move them depended on the transportation system. So those days, it depended on the speed of the motor vehicles, trains, airplanes and so forth that carried the record. So now, of course, records can be transferred between electronic databases in milliseconds through wireless technologies, high-speed cable lines or even ordinary telephone lines. And also, consider the duration of information, that is, how long information can be kept. Before the information era, information was manually recorded and stored in file cabinets 
and then enlarge physical repositories. In the past, practices involving the retention of personal data were perhaps more forgiving because of practical limitations such as physical storage space that affected how long personal data could be kept on file. Much of the personal information collected and stored had to be destroyed after a certain number of years. Since information could not be archived indefinitely, people with blemish records sometimes had the opportunity to start over again by physically relocating. Today, however, one's electronic profile making it very difficult for that person to start over with a clean slate. We can argue whether the current means of data retention is a good thing, but it is difficult to arrive at an agreement. Cyber technology has also generated privacy concerns because of the kind of personal information that can now be collected. For example, every time you engage in an electronic transaction, such as making a purchase with a credit card or withdrawing money from an ATM, transactional information is collected and stored in several computer databases. This information can then be transferred electronically across commercial networks to agencies that request it. Personal information retrieved from transactional information that is stored in computer databases has been used to construct electronic profiles containing detailed information about an individual's commercial transactions, including purchases made and places traveled, information that can reveal patterns in person's preferences and habits. Now we examine the concept of personal privacy to get a better understanding of what privacy is and why we value it. Although many definitions of privacy have been put forth, there is no universally agreed definition of this concept. To explain this point, consider some of the metaphors that are typically associated with privacy. Sometimes we speak of privacy as something that can be lost or diminished, suggesting that privacy can be understood in terms of a repository of personal information that can be either diminished altogether or gradually eroded. Contrast this view with descriptions of privacy as something that can be intruded or invaded, where privacy can be understood in terms of a spatial metaphor such as a zone that deserves protection. Alternatively, privacy is sometimes described as something that can be violated or breached when we think of it in terms of either a right or an interest that deserves legal protection. Because of these different conceptions of privacy, we will see that it is useful to distinguish between the notions of funds having privacy and once having right to privacy. Initially, privacy was understood in terms of freedom from intrusion. Later, it became associated with freedom from interference into one's personal affairs, including one's ability to make decisions freely. Most recently, privacy has come to be closely identified with concerns affecting access to and control of personal information a view that is also referred to as informational privacy. If we take the accessibility privacy, accessibility privacy could be understood as being let alone or being free from intrusion. This definition of privacy as freedom from unwarranted intrusion focuses on the harm that can be caused through physical access to a person or to a person's possession. And then the decisional privacy. This privacy consider of as a freedom from interference in one's personal choices, plans and decisions. Because of increasing use of technology to gather and exchange personal information, many contemporary analysts view privacy in connection with one's ability to restrict access to and control the flow of one's personal information. Privacy concerns are now often framed in terms of questions such as who should have the access to one's personal information, to what extent can an individual control the way in which information about them can be gathered, stored, mined, combined, recombined, exchanged and sold. Since privacy can be of value for greater social goods such as democracy as well as for individual autonomy and choice, 
it would seem that it is important and worth protecting. But privacy is increasingly threatened by new cyber and cyber related technologies. So we can identify three different kinds of practices that threaten the privacy by cyber technology. The first one, data gathering techniques. These techniques used to collect and record personal information often without the knowledge and consent of the users. The second one, data exchange techniques. Those are used to transfer and exchange personal data across and between computer databases, typically without the knowledge and consent of the users. The last one, data mining techniques. These techniques used to search large databases in order to generate consumer profiles based on behavioral patterns and certain groups. If we move on to the first one, gathering techniques, it includes monitoring, recording, and tracking techniques. Collecting and recording data about people is hardly new because from the earlier years, governments have collected and recorded census information. Not all data gathering and data recording practices have caused controversy about privacy. However, sub technology makes it possible to collect data about individuals without their knowledge and consent. Data surveillance techniques, internet cookies, RFID technology, and government surveillances consider as controversial ways in which cyber technology is used to gather and record personal data. So the second technique, exchanging techniques, include merging and matching electronic records. The computer merging is the technique of extracting information from two or more unrelated databases that contain information about some individual or group of individuals and then integrating that information into a composite file. Computer matching is a variation of the technology used to merge computerized records. It involves cross-checking information in two or more unrelated databases to produce matching records or hits. The third technique, formally referred to as knowledge discovery in databases or KDD, the process is now more commonly known as data mining. Essentially, data mining involves the indirect gathering of personal information through an analysis of implicit patterns discoverable in data. Data mining activities can generate new and sometimes non-obvious classifications or categories. As a result, individuals whose data are mined can become identified with or linked to certain newly created groups that they might never have imagined to exist. This is further complicated by the fact that current privacy laws offer individuals virtually no protection with respect to how information about them acquired through data mining activities is subsequently used, even though important decisions can be made about those individuals based on the patterns found on the mined personal data. So data mining technology can be used in ways that raise special concerns for personal privacy. Initially, the mining of personal data depend on large offline commercial databases called data warehouse, which stored the data consisting primarily of transactional information. Data mining techniques are now also used by commercial websites to analyze data about internet users, which can then be sold to third parties. This process is sometimes referred to as web mining, which has been defined as the application of data mining techniques to discover patterns from the web. So these kinds of patterns discovered from the web mining can be useful to market in promotional campaigns. So that's all for this lecture. Actually, data protection and privacy is a vast subject area to discuss we only brought you the basics of it. In the next episode, we are going to discuss unethical practices in computing. And under that, we are going to explain spams, software piracy, cybercrime, hacking, and viruses. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lecture. This video brought to you by edupediaworld.com. Watch more from our website.